Hey everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub, time for another movie review. Tonight's movie, Rock for Jesus. And the reason I'm watching it is because it is not rated anywhere. Every other movie I'm looking at that I could watch right now is like rated low or is not interesting to me. So I wanted to watch something, because um, I do it every night. And uh, so this one popped up. I was like, yeah, let's see what it's rated. It's not rated yet. So nobody's telling me how bad it is. So hopefully it'll be good. I don't know. It is about Aaron Driver. And he was a singer of a uh, Christian rock band named Reborn. I don't know. The way they say it, maybe it's based on a true story. I don't know. But then he starts struggling with some suicidal thoughts because he fell out of a favor with his band. He lost the love of his life. Um, but now some mysterious producer shows up. And he's got a second chance by moving to Los Angeles and restart his life and his career. I don't know. Um, so it says on the screen right now, and the reason I can tell you that is because it's on Amazon Prime. Full free if you're an Amazon Prime member. So I'll get into it, um, find out what it's really about, and then let you know if it's any good. I do believe it's uh, two hours and four minutes long, so a little bit longer. We'll see what it's like. Um, stick around. I'll be back. I'll let you know. Hey everybody, we're at the credits of Rock for Jesus, the comeback story, or let me say it, it's actually the ultimate comeback. Yeah, so that's part of it as well. And when you look at about on IMDb, when it's, you're looking at Amazon Prime, it's just Rock for Jesus, but it's the ultimate comeback. That's kind of misleading, the ultimate comeback. Um, you know, you can imagine what can happen. I expect there to be you know, more about the comeback when you call it the ultimate comeback. But, I digress. So, sorry there's no check-ins on a two hour and four minute film, right? I mean, but I didn't think it was needed because a lot of what I read to you in the beginning held true. He's um, a rock star, a Christian rock star, um, who has some troubles come upon him. Um, basically, the whole Point, point of this is he deals with depression, as you can imagine, when they talk about suicidal thoughts. So he deals with depression. Um, and, you know, that causes some problems here and there. And uh, um, He leaves his band, his girlfriend breaks up with him, which is not very clear. And they do clear it up for you later, but you really got to pay attention on what happened there with him and his girlfriend, because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because... You know, he's really broken hearted about it for most of the film, and that's driving his depression. But you're not sure what happened. And they do explain it, but it might get lost if you blink. So, um, you know, I think they could have done... One thing really to call out, Joel Jackson is our... So his name was Aaron in the movie, Aaron Jones. But he's played by Joel Jackson. Well, Joel is also the writer and the director. So this is all him. And uh, so I, you know, I applaud that. Anybody who can write and direct and star in their own movie, that's fantastic. And I think there's a lot of good in this. You know, there's a lot of, you know, things to overcome. Um, but I think there's a couple of opportunities. One, our main character Aaron, and I understand he deals with depression, but at no, you know, at points like so he has his girlfriend, and then that goes bad, and then he moves to L.A. But he finds another friend, right? But at no point do they do we see any really likable moments of Aaron Jones. You're not really he's you know again dealing with depression, but the whole time his character was just unlikable. Um, I would think that maybe you can have him in likable situations where you want to root for him. Then of course depression happens and maybe pulls him down into an unlikable state. That type of thing. But there's at no point that you really, really like this Aaron Jones, except for when he sings, you know, um, which you don't see a lot of. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's a piece of it that, eh, they could have, you know, he could have spiced him up a little bit and make him a little bit likable. Um, one of the best parts of this whole movie, my daughter came down a couple of times, which was great because I didn't have to pause it. You know, it's not something, hey, let's sit down. It's a movie about Jesus. She's like, the real Jesus? Yeah, the real Jesus. Um, but uh, the um, drone shots 
I mean, it, it's plentiful. There's a lot of drone shots in this, but they are fantastic. I mean, I loved it. I think he did a lot of them from what I was seeing in the credits. Um, and, you know, somebody else did, and I think some might have been purchased, but, oh, it was, they were incredible. Just for the drone, if you're a fan of that type of scenery and photography, you'd watch this movie. Absolutely, because they were phenomenal right from the beginning, and it continues throughout. So, you know, it makes me interested in maybe buying a drone. Really, that's what this film did for me, um, as far as that. Um, there's also this subplot going on. So, like I said, he's in a band, um, Reborn, and when he splits to L.A., so a producer comes and finds him and convinces him to come out to L.A. to record. Well, the producer doesn't come. It first seems like he's a guardian angel kind of thing, and the way they make it seem like, oh, he's going to help him pull himself out of, you know, whatever trouble he's in or, you know, the mental state that he's in, and he's going to help guide him and mentor him. Well... He's not the best influence, you come to find out. Which leads down a weird path at the end. Um, so I was surprised at how far, whatever, it went. Didn't have to go that way. But um, when he goes to L.A. with his producer, his other bandmate, Nathan, becomes like a co-main character. So they kind of split the stories a little bit. And Nathan um, has another friend that we don't know much about. Um, that's in the hospital and evidently sick. So there's this other side story that's underdeveloped that I think, you know, if you wanted to do that, it could have been a little bit more developed. And then they show him and his relationships and things that are going on with his love life. But they're inconsequential, I think. There's not enough weight given to those sides of the story um, to really spark our interest, my opinion, in any way. It's underdeveloped. But, I mean, they had two hours and... You know what I mean? But there was a lot going on. I think there was, I think they took Aaron's story a little bit too far. They could have cut that back and made it a little bit more concise. Maybe spent a little bit more time on Nathan's story, um, and and what was going on theirs because it was it was there, but it was you know, um, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, you know, and it just wasn't developed enough. I think with his other character Sam, which we find out has a little bit more importance at the end, but. Again, I don't know. Underdeveloped there. And I think they could have spent more time on that. And that's it, I think. That's really all I, I got for you. I mean, I think I covered everything. That's everything I wrote down. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It is a two hour long movie. I was interested the whole time. Um, you know, despite what we talked about. It's a. It's a decent movie about overcoming depression and and suicide awareness and everything like that um, but I don't know the lesson or the it just it took a long time and then they didn't take that next step when you're talking rock for Jesus the uh, underdog story or the the ultimate comeback I'm sorry the, not the underdog the ultimate comeback I want to see the comeback you don't see a lot of that. You know, you see what leads to it. Like, if there's a sequel, <laughs> you know, we'll see that there. So, uh, I don't know. And, and the other thing, not that it's a big deal, but I struggled this whole movie to figure out where the initial... He, he kept saying, they kept saying he's from a small town. You go back to your small town and whatever. That's, you know, said throughout. And I'm like, what town is it? I'm looking at it. I'm like, is it Boston? Whatever. Then... They drive out to L.A. and it only takes them two days. It can't be Boston. It'll take three days to get out there. What's it? So finally, they, they release it's in Indiana. And that was at the end. I could not figure that out. I don't know what that matters to you, but that's kind of a game I play when I watch these movies. Like, where is the setting of this movie without reading and figuring it out? Um, so there you go. Oh, one last piece. I'm sorry. I'm really giving you a lot of description on this movie. Probably already turned me off. But they also set it up as a documentary. Or maybe a mockumentary, I don't know. But they, they show him in the beginning how they're documenting him as a lead singer, his new relationship with his girlfriend, the first girlfriend. Um, and, you know, that, that comes in and out. It comes into play a little bit here and more, here and there. It's really heavy in the beginning, but trails off throughout the other hour and 45 minutes. I mean, it's in there pieced. And then at the end, they kind of come back. But the connection with the... 
documentary piece of it isn't there for me and you'll see what I mean they they come back and you know the first part's about him being a rock star and then the second part is more about his depression so if you watch this movie you'll know exactly what I mean when you see that I think they they missed something there to tie the documentary mockumentary piece together I like the concept don't get me wrong but I think they could have done a little bit more there but I think there's a lot of good here. I just, uh, you know, I, I wish like I was friends with him and he would say, hey, watch this movie and tell me what you think. What could we do? And, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe my way wouldn't even be any better. Um, so many ideas I have. But there you go. That's what I got for you. If you check it out, let me know. Um, love to hear your thoughts. Put them in the comments there. Did you agree with me? What do you think? It is a faith-based film. And again, I... I I know I say there's a little bit of criticism in my reviews, but I mean, I, I still, I'm no Joel Jackson who wrote, directed, and starred in this. And uh, uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry. I'm rambling on, trying to think of more to say. I don't need to say any more. If you check it out, drop me a line. Love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and continue to tune in to Kimmel's Irish.